What's going on guys and welcome back to Rooted in Reptiles. In today's episode we're going to be taking a look inside of my cockroach room and I'll give you guys a little bit of a tour and show you what I'm working with in the way of uh, feeder cockroaches. So give me a minute and we will be down at the room. All right guys, so we are down in the pole building. This is where I keep my cockroaches. It's out of the house and I am able to have a room down here, um, the bathroom that is heated. Um, so all my roaches are in a controlled and heated room. Um, so that way it's easier and more efficient for me to keep them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head in here and I'll show you what I'm doing and what I'm working with. All right guys, so as we enter the roach room here, um, you're able to see that I have uh, currently five bins in here. Um, I didn't get to finish my um, other lateralis bin, just it's going to be identical to this one, but um, unfortunately I ran out of plastic epoxy to epoxy the mesh in the top, so I have to just get that um, here the next time I can get to Home Depot. So. Basically what I have going on here is I have Dubia down here on the bottom. I have uh, Discoids here above them. I have Lateralis and then I have Orange Heads above them. And then the bottom bin down there is just an empty bin, which is why I have the vents covered um, because there's nothing obviously living in there. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you guys through each bin and uh, show you my roaches and basically how they're set up. It's super simple. I'm keeping things super simple. Um, so we'll get started. The discoids. Um, I just got my lateralis, my discoids, and the orange heads. I've had the dubia now for months um, and you'll be able to see that by the size of the colony. But basically what I did is I just uh, got um, uh, I think it's like a hundred baby discoids, so there's no adults in here. It's just an entire group of babies, and um, that way it was fairly cheap for me to get them. And I'll just keep these and raise these um, as, until they get big and breathing. And then once I have a sizable colony of these guys, I'll go ahead and start feeding from it. Um, again, these are all roaches that I'm using for the um, for the bearded dragon project and for the dwarf monitor projects that I will be starting once I purchase a house um, just due to the space that they require and uh, once I have a once I have a proper room it'll be far easier for me to to give them the proper amount of space so basically these are just my discoids they're super small babies right now um, and they're chowing down on this carrot so the next bin that we're going to get into here is my Dubia bin. Now you'll be able to see when I open this that there are a lot of Dubia in here. Um, again, I keep my, or I shouldn't say again, I haven't said it yet, but I keep my uh, carrots and everything away from the dry food. The dry food I just pour down through the egg crate and uh, that way it keeps it separate just to keep uh, grain mites away. You don't want grain mites in your colonies. They're just nuisances. They're not necessarily harmful to anything, but they are nuisances and you don't want them in your house because they will get into your food. So as we go through this, you'll be able to see that I do have quite a few dubia going here, um, which is good. I want, I will be using that empty bin at the bottom of the other stack to uh, do another dubia colony. Dubia seem to be super easy to raise. I haven't had the lateralis or anything that long, but uh, yeah, so these guys are, are going pretty good. I eased off on, on really feeding them to slow the colony growth down because I thought I was selling the colony, but then the Bearded Dragon project came up and so I need them now. So uh, as you guys can see, they're going pretty well for me and I am just continuing to pound the food on them and it seems to be working really, really well for them. So uh, we'll get these guys put back. You guys see a lot of things uh, about uh, keeping and raising roaches and how great they are. And I truly think that they are 
an awesome alternative to crickets. They're supposed to be far healthier for your animals, and it's nice to be able to uh, not hear them and not smell them like crickets, but and also be able to raise them at home. I mean, all right, so this is my lateralis colony. I ordered uh, 2,000 of these guys because uh, these, I believe, are going to be a super um, efficient food source for my dragons, especially when they're babies and uh, juveniles because they are supposed to be extremely prolific. I haven't got a bloom of these yet, but I am hoping to get one soon. Um, I didn't get adults because they didn't have adults available, so I just got juveniles. But you guys, um, you're able to see one thing right off the bat, that these are super fast, um, which reminds me a lot of, like, cr of a lot um, of crickets. So uh, that's one thing. They're uh, going to be about the size of the large crickets when they're done growing, um, but they are growing extremely fast for me. One thing that should be noted is these guys can't climb. Um, they are scary in cold temperatures. The order that I got these guys in, um, there was a little bit of miscommunication on my part. The package came a day earlier than I was planning on it coming. So these guys sat out in the cold for I think like four or five hours maybe. And uh, when I got them, they were at roughly 38 degrees. And these guys were moving around like uh, they were perfectly fine. Um, no notable change in behavior they might have been a little bit slower, but that's about it. Uh, you're able to see again that there's an absolute crap ton of these guys in here. And uh, I've seen guys who've started with less than 100 of these, and within two months they have thousands and thousands and thousands of babies. These guys are egg layers. The, they cannot climb these walls. They recommend keeping them in these uh, clear plastic bins. Um, I'm would assume because these are a little bit slicker than the colored plastic bins. But one thing that should be noted is the males of these are supposed to be able to fly. Um, I don't think that they're supposed to be good flyers, but they are supposed to fly, um, which is one thing that I am not super fond of, um, and I'm not super crazy about how they uh, can survive extremely easily the cold temperatures. Um, I, it's just scary to think if these guys got out. Um, but again, they are supposed to be extremely prolific breeders. So, um, the risk could very well be worth the reward when it comes to keeping them, um, because it's just going to cut down on my food and, uh, feeding costs, uh, extremely, extremely low. All I'll have to do is um, either grow or buy vegetables, depending on the time of year. I plan on growing an organic garden for the dragons and for the reptiles that need them, need vegetables in their diets. Um, some of the blue tongues, the blue tongue skinks should have some type of um, vegetable matter in their diets. So the vegetable garden will work out for them. And then I'll feed the scraps to these colonies so that'll cut back on me having to buy carrots. So that's the lateralis. Again, I really like them so far, but they are a scary roach to work with, just um, and seeing that they didn't even really stop moving when they were at 38 degrees. Um, I don't know how their breeding would be, but these guys are egg layers, so that's why I have these original uh, egg cartons in here. And that's why I don't really clear this bin out because I don't want these guys getting out. Um, they, so they don't have live birth, which is something that you guys should be aware of. So don't move your egg cartons from a lateralis bin to a dubia bin because you're gonna end up, uh, you're gonna have an extremely high chance that you're gonna end up with lateralis in your dubia bin and then they're just gonna be everywhere and that's not what you want. But lateralis, I really like them. I really like the discoids as well. They seem to be behaving like, uh, like dubias, and so I'm really liking that. I don't really like keeping roaches on substrate um, purely because um, it makes them more difficult and it's just something that I don't really like to deal with. So any roach that I can keep uh, that doesn't climb and that doesn't need substrate, I'm working on keeping. I'm going to try and add some more species of roach uh, to this room and to my roach uh, collection just so I have a variety 
in the uh, diet of my reptiles. Obviously, variety is always good when it comes to keeping any animal and its diet. So we're going to move on to the orange heads. These are the largest, the orange heads are the largest roaches um, that I keep currently. And I'll describe them to you. So the orange heads, um, these guys are a little bit bigger than Dubia. They don't climb, um, they have live birth. And um, one thing, I've been having a little bit of a rough time getting these guys established. I've only had them for a week now. Um, but they are supposed to require high humidity, which makes it a little bit hard because the room is only at 25% uh, humidity. So I have added this water in the corner to hopefully raise the humidity in this bin. I just added that today, and hopefully that will help these guys thrive a little bit better and uh, be better producers for me. Right here you can see a male. The males don't have wings, or have wings, sorry, and the females don't, so they're identified like um, Dubia in that aspect. Um, these guys seem to be a little bit bigger. They're kind of like an in-between of Dubia and Mad Hissers. Now these are all supposed to be juveniles. Obviously the male there was an adult, but um, Again, you can see they are pretty big roaches already. Um, pretty nice meaty at that. That one is it molting, um, but there's another another male there. Oh, sorry guy, I don't know if you're gonna make it, but. Um, anyway, that's the orange heads. Again, I don't have a ton of these, so I won't be feeding from these. Basically what I'm gonna be feeding from to start is the lateralis and the dubia. But you have to start your colony somewhere, so that's basically what I'm doing and what I've done is I've just gotten the colony started and hopefully that will um, allow me to uh, really get them going and producing for me. So again, I have another feeder source um, when it comes to the uh, reptiles. So that's basically my... Um, Roach room, it's super simple. I keep things super simple down here. Uh, I'm the only one who comes in this room um, because I want to keep it clean. I want to keep things organized and uh, I don't really want the roaches contaminated with anything, just like my reptiles. So that's my roach room. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode and uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be more than willing to answer them for you guys. And as always, guys, let me know what you uh, think in the comment section below. Let me know if you guys found this video useful and helpful. And uh, just please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, guys.